out of books. Um, the other day I was looking for something really out of the ordinary and interesting to read. Uh, something that I wouldn't ordinarily pick up. <clears throat> so I, I picked up an essay collection by Susan Sontag, uh, the one that her son, David Reef, came out with shortly after she passed away, and saw an essay by, uh, or about, rather, a man named Haldor Laksnos on his novel Under the Glacier. And not wanting to give away too much to myself, I read only the first couple of paragraphs and was interested enough to pick it up since I actually had it in my library. And then I was going to set the rest of the essay aside for later and read it after I'd finished the novel. So I ended up uh, going with my hunch and thinking that it would, it would be interesting. And here's the novel. Like I said, it's, um, it's called Under the Glacier by Haldor Laksnus. Uh, Haldor Laksnus, by the way, is the, at least to date, as of 2012, is the only uh, Icelander to have ever won the Nobel Prize in Literature. So I think that's a kind of a, a distinctive um, accolade. The novel tells the story of a nameless bishop's emissary. In fact, he's, he's only referred to in the novel as M.B., which is short for Emissary of the Bishop, Imbi. And Imbi is sent uh, to a distant part of Iceland to investigate the odd behavior of the people there. Among other things, uh, the local pastor, uh, who, his name is Pastor Kjan, uh, has given up burying the dead. And uh, the local church has been boarded up. And, uh, and the views of the community have seemed to become uh, decidedly less orthodox in nature as time has gone on. Much of the novel is just a, a retelling of Imbi's frustrations, his continuous frustrations and confusions at the behavior of these people and trying to figure it out. Uh, when Imbi asks Pastor Hyun about the importance of delivering sermons, which is his job, right? He's a pastor. He says, oh no, better to be silent. That is what the glacier does. That is what the lilies of the fields do. Instead, Pastor Hyun spends most of his time traveling around the village, shoeing horses, and repairing old electric stoves. During his fact-finding mission, MB happens across a truck-driving poet named uh, Hodinus Alfberg and his boss, the New A.G., and oddly conman-like Godman Singman, uh, know his name, Godman, spelled G-O-D-M-O-N, M-A-N, excuse me. Singman is leading a group of Hatha Yoga pra practitioners and acolytes from Ojai, California, through Iceland on some sort of a mission to find themselves. You know, that, that grating exhortation of the New Age, go find yourself. Singman, in his attempts to harness the universal hieratic powers of, of the stars and of the universe, ultimately wants to reanimate the dead of this village. And at one point, MB meets the resurrected Ua, spelled U-A, and apparently that is the sound that men used to make upon meeting her. I thought that was funny. Um, but who has apparently been resurrected from the dead. She was once married to Pastor Hyun, who's in charge of the village. Uh, but that was before she died, or possibly was turned into a fish. Yeah. Um, despite its subject... Uh, you, you've probably uh, got some sort of a grasp on how odd this novel is now. Despite its subject, Under the Glacier has the occasional humorous moment. Uh, but I didn't find it the hilarious, uproarious, <clears throat> and profound novel that Susan Sontag claims that it is in her essay on Under the Glacier. Um, or that several other uh, reviewers, not necessarily on Goodreads or YouTube or, or any one site, but just reviewers in particular, uh, found it to be. And this may speak to the time 
uh, when it was published. It was published in 1968, which was certainly a momentous year for Europe, uh, politically and culturally. Um, it was also a chaotic time that you probably needed to live through in order to understand the immediacy of its importance. But my parents were still learning algebra in 1968, and I'm a child of the 90s. A world of mixtape cassettes and Carmen San Diego and giant cell phones. Uh, revolution was the furthest thing from our minds. So trying to sum up and think about what this novel is all about, I had a bit of trouble. Is this novel a rollicking attempt to, to, to poke fun at the American and largely clueless embrace of Eastern religious traditions? Or maybe it's just expressing its di discontent with institutionalized Christianity, or maybe my problem is that I'm looking for it to be about something in the first place. Uh, I ought to give Susan Sontag's other well-known essay, uh, Against Interpretation, another look, since I seem to be retrogressing in regards to the advice it gives, which is to not read books in some reductive way as to take away a message from them, but to just enjoy the aesthetic sensibilities and pleasures that a novel or piece of art or piece of music offers to the person who is sensing it. Uh, I can't say I would recommend this book. It has been called one of Haldor Loxness's more idiosyncratic odd novels, so I might, I think I have three or four of his other novels. I might end up trying one one day, but reading this didn't really leave me itching for more Loxus, that's for sure. Um, Under the Glacier by Haldor Loxus.